Again, I want to remind you here that I've broken rank from the textbook. I've used much easier and much nicer numbers than the textbook has used in this situation because I don't want you starting off with really hard fractions. Let's look at this. It says approximate the area of the region bounded by the x-axis in the curve of f of x equals negative x squared plus 25 on the interval negative 1 to 5 using L3. So what the heck does L3 mean? L3 means when I find the rectangles, I'm going to use the left endpoint of the rectangle, the function value of the left endpoint of the rectangle, to determine the height. I use the function value of the left endpoint of the rectangle to determine the height of the rectangle. That's what L3 means, left endpoint, and then the 3 means the number of rectangles. So it says that is approximate the area using three rectangles, the number, and the L stands for the left endpoint of each rectangle to determine it. Again, I am using much nicer numbers than they did in the books. So what's the first thing we do? The first thing we do is determine the number of rectangles. How many rectangles do they want? They want three N equals three rectangles, right? That's the first thing that they wanted. What's the second thing we do? Well, we have to determine the width of each rectangle. So the width is called delta x, the change in x. Don't worry about the notation, just know delta x means the width. And how do we do that? Well, it's always the right endpoint minus the left endpoint divided by the number of rectangles. So in this case, the right endpoint is 5, the left endpoint is negative 1, and the number of rectangles they want is 3. So 5 minus negative 1 is 6, divided by 3 would be 2. So the width of each rectangle is going to be 2. So what's the third thing we do? The third thing we do is we're going to draw out this little number line. This is really going to help us visualize what's going on. Draw out the number line, mark the left endpoint and the right endpoint, right? And we need to break this into three equal size rectangles. So I'm going to cut it twice. That gives me three equal rectangles. And now I need to think about what are my labels. So how do I get my labels? Always start with the left hand side. And then each time you're just going to add the width. So I start with negative 1, and I'm going to add the width, which is 2. So negative 1 plus 2 would be 1. Now I add 2 again. 1 plus 2 would be 3. And then I check the last one. 3 plus 2 is 5. So perfect. Notice the width of every single one of these rectangles, or every single one of these spaces, is 2. Okay. So if you think about it, this is my first rectangle right here. For that rectangle right there, I want to use the left endpoint to determine the height. So negative 1, whatever the function value is at negative 1, you go up here, here's the function value at negative 1, that's going to determine the height of my rectangle. Okay. Let's look at the next one. I have my next rectangle. Here's my second rectangle. Again, it said use the left endpoint. So I look at f of 1. Here's f of 1, the function value right here. f of 1, that determines the height of the second rectangle. Let's look at the next one. Here's my third rectangle right here. I'm going to use the left endpoint there. So that's going to be f of 3. And notice if I go up to f of 3, there's the point at f of 3. That determines the height of the third rectangle. So what I've done is I've broken up the interval, and I've seen what values do I need to plug into my function to determine my heights. Okay? We move on then to step four. Sorry, step four was actually circling. So step four was circling those numbers. So let me erase this one up here. So step five is determine the height at each one of those numbers. So here's where I'm going to use that table function on my calculator. I need to determine the function height at each one of those values. The values that I need to plug in are negative 1, 1, and 3, the numbers that I circled. So I need to determine each one of those heights. So I'm going in my calculator, the table feature. I clear out whatever's in there. I'm going to type in negative x squared plus 25. I hit Enter. Start doesn't matter, stop doesn't matter, ask x needs to be highlighted, hit OK. I'm going to type in negative 1, enter, my function value would be 24. 
I'm going to type in 1 and enter, and my function value is also 24. I type in the number 3 and enter, and I get a function value of 16. So what have I determined? I've determined the height of this rectangle is 24, the height of the second rectangle is 24, and the height of the third rectangle is 16. That's visually what I've just done. Well, don't I also know the width of every single one of these? Isn't the width of every single one of these equal to 2? Didn't I decide that when I found in step 2 the width, delta x? So isn't the width of every single one of these? I'll try to use a different color. How about blue? We know that this width is 2, this width is 2, and this width is 2. So now I can move on to step 6, which would be find the area of each one of those rectangles. So to find the area of the first rectangle, I would do the height times the width. So that would be 24 times 2. To find the area of the second rectangle, I'd do the height times the width, which would be 24 times 2 yet again. In the third one, for the third rectangle, I'd do the height times the width, which would be 16 times the 2, that delta x. And then step 7 says what I do is I take all of those and I add them together. So I'm going to go into my calculator. I'm going to do 24 times 2 plus 24 times 2. plus 16 times 2. And when I do that, I get the answer of 128. Now this is an area, and it's a little weird because in an xy plane, we technically don't have units. So whatever the units would be here, it would be those units squared. But there are no units, so we can't say units squared here. You just need to realize this is area. So if this were inches, for instance, we would have to say 128 square inches. So it looks like what we have done is we have estimated the area beneath the curve of negative x squared plus 25, this shaded, this area that we wanted, we've estimated it using three rectangles. We used the left endpoint of each rectangle to determine the height. We got an answer of 128 square units. But it seems to me like we've greatly overestimated this area. Just by the picture, I can see I overestimated the area. So how can I make it more accurate? What could I do to make it more accurate? Well, maybe not use the left endpoint, maybe use the right endpoint. And maybe not use three rectangles, use more rectangles or fewer rectangles. Or, and the answer is it totally depends on the function as to what the best strategy is. If you said, well, using the left is bad and using the right is better, well, in this function that might be true. But I could give you another function where that absolutely isn't true. And you might say using three rectangles is bad, using three, six rectangles is better. Well, finding the area of three rectangles is a heck of a lot easier than six. And I could give you functions where three rectangles would give you the exact same accuracy as six rectangles. So it, you can't say that one way is always better. That's not true. One way is not always better. But we, let's do the exact same problem using a different way. So in part B, it says, approximate the area of the region bounded by the x-axis of the curve of f of x equals negative x squared plus 25 on the interval negative 1 to 5 using R6. So exact same function, exact same place. We're using something different, though. We're going to call this R6. So what does R6 mean? R6 means we want six rectangles. And instead of using the left endpoint to determine it, we want to use the right endpoint to determine the height of every single rectangle. So let's go through our steps. First thing is, is how many rectangles do they want? They want six rectangles. Second thing is, what's the width of each one of those rectangles need to be? What is the width? Well, the width is delta x, and that has to be the right endpoint, which is 5, minus the left endpoint, which is negative 1, divided by the number of rectangles, which is 6. In this case, this is 6 over 6, so the width of each rectangle is 1. The third step is we need to draw that number line. So this is the number line from, let me use black here, from negative 1 to 5. And we need to break it into that many rectangles. So we need to break this into six rectangles, which means I need five slices. One, two, three, four, five. Try to make the pieces look as equal as possible, because the distance between them technically is equal. 
But if you're not perfect at slicing them and making all your sizes of the slices the same, as long as you label them, I'm okay with that. Just try to make it look as good as you can, okay? Now we need to label each one of those slices. How do you do that? Start at the left and always add the width. So we have negative one plus one is zero. Plus one is one, plus one is two, plus one is three, plus one is four, plus one is five. If you notice, we have created one, two, three, four, five, six rectangles exactly as it wanted. Now we go to step four and we think about which point for each rectangle did we want to use for, to determine the height. On the previous problem, we used the left endpoint of each rectangle. On this version, we're gonna use the right endpoint of each interval. So what do we do? Think about that first rectangle, which goes from negative one to zero. Which one of those points are we using? Well, we're using the right endpoint, so we would be using zero. The next one, between zero and one, we'd be using one. Between one and two, we'd be using two. Two and three is three. 3 and 4 is 4, and 4 and 5 is 5. So those are the values that we need to plug into the function. So that's step 5, plug each one of those values into the function to determine the height. So we have the x value, sorry, we have the x value. We need to plug it into the function f of x equals, and that was negative x squared plus 25. And again, this gives me the height of each one, okay? So let's plug in all of these values. It was the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Notice six rectangles. I have to plug in six values. Again, I'm doing this on the table feature of my calculator. The beauty is I already have it entered. So I'm just going back to my chart. I'm going to hit 0, enter, and I get 25. 1, enter, and I get 24. 2, enter, I'm getting 21. 3, enter, I'm getting 16. 4, enter, I'm getting 9. 5, enter, I'm getting 0. So that's the height. Now let's think about extending this chart right here. We know every single time what the width is. The width every single time is delta x, which in this case is 1. So all of those are by 1, have to be 1. So what do we do to find the area? To find the, sorry, to find the area, to find the area, all I have to do is do the height times the width. So take those two numbers and multiply them. Well, this is all these numbers times 1, so it's just 25, 24, 21, 16, 9, and 0. And then to find the total area, what I do is I just add all of those numbers together. I just add all of those numbers together. So I'm gonna go in my calculator. I'm gonna quit out of my little table. I'm gonna do 25 plus 24 plus 21 plus 16 plus nine plus zero. And I'm getting a total of 95. So what's the answer if we use, estimate it using six rectangles with the right endpoint of every rectangle doing it, we would get an approximation of 95 square units. So again, looking at the picture, this looks like an underestimation. So we know 128 is an overestimation, 95 is an underestimation. So what's the actual area beneath that curve? Somewhere between those two numbers.